Sunday's Belgian Grand Prix was one to remember for a number of reasons. For Red Bull, it was a disappointing race with Max Verstappen unable to make the progress Red Bull thought he should have and Sergio Perez falling from the front row to 8th place. For McLaren, they were left wondering what could have been if Lando Norris had got a better start. For Mercedes, it was an incredible drive by George Russell to cross the line in first place, securing a 1-2 finish. His disqualification was all the more painful for how bold his strategy call had been to secure the race win. After the race, though, Lewis Hamilton was furious with his team for his race strategy. Today, I'll check out the fallout of Mercedes after the Belgian Grand Prix and why both drivers are angry at their team, so don't go anywhere. Almost 16 years ago, Lewis Hamilton took the chequered flag at the end of a heart-stopping final sequence of laps to win the Belgian Grand Prix for the first time in his Formula 1 career. Or so he thought. Two hours after stepping off the podium, trophy in hand, the McLaren driver was informed victory was no longer his. Deemed to have cut the bus stop chicane and gaining an advantage while battling Kimi Raikkonen for the lead three laps from the finish, the stewards handed Hamilton a 25-second hammer blow which cost him victory, handing it to his championship rival Felipe Massa. 16 years is a long time and the pain of losing that first Belgian Grand Prix win has probably passed, but he still might take a second to think that everything has finally come full circle. After all, it was a massive shock to the seven-time world champion that he hadn't won the 2024 Belgian Grand Prix when he crossed the finish line. Obviously, he knew he was behind George Russell, but he must have been asking himself how he managed to end up there. On lap three, Hamilton took the race win off Charles Leclerc, and from then on, as long as he drove clean and consistent laps, the race win should have been his. Having led 5,481 laps over the course of his career, it's a job he's got pretty good at. When Hamilton's teammate George Russell stopped on lap 10 from P5, a lap before Hamilton, there can't have been any thought in Mercedes or Hamilton's mind that George would be a threat. On lap 26, though, Russell realized that his best chance in the race was to not stop a second time and instead make the most of a hard tire that improved as it wore. His race engineer Marcus Dudley was not convinced when George suggested it, saying that he should be pushing to prevent an undercut attempt by Lando Norris. Russell pushed the point, though. Are you saying these tires won't go to the end? Russell challenged him. They will, Dudley conceded, but we think it's quicker to stop. What Mercedes hadn't taken into account at that point was how hard it was to pass around the Spa circuit this year. The shortening of the DRS zone on the Kemmel straight, combined with the difficulty of getting close to the car ahead due to dirty air, meant that to overtake, you had to be significantly faster than the car ahead. Russell was adamant. At the moment, they're just going quicker and quicker, the tires. I'm still going green, mate. Afterwards, Russell confirmed the lap time gain mostly came on the new sections of track. Russell's pleas were starting to sway his team. Dudley let him know Mercedes were discussing his proposal. But as it became clear he would lose multiple positions if he did stop, it was starting to become worth the gamble. And George, just confirming you're happy to stay out, Dudley double-checked. Yes, George affirmed, before his engineer had even finished speaking. It was a gamble that appeared to have paid off as the race wound down. Hamilton was taking over half a second a lap out of his teammate's lead, lap after lap, as the race approached the final five circuits, but once he got within DRS range, that advantage disappeared. The double hit of dirty air and that shortened DRS zone meant that he was unable to get close enough to make a pass at any point on the circuit. It was an inspired strategy call from George Russell, which no other team or driver saw as a possibility. However, what Russell celebrated, Hamilton was furious. In the post-race interviews, Hamilton appeared completely dejected and placed the blame for losing the race directly on his team. You have to put the faith in the people that you work with, so I put my faith in my strategists. I should be able to lean on them fully. I told them that the tires were fine and they pulled me in. Did I know that I was at risk of getting one stop by my teammate? They didn't tell me that. He was almost silent as he sulked in the cooldown room and looked completely dejected on the podium, despite his team securing a fantastic 1-2 finish. At that point, it was a race lost for Hamilton, not a second place secured. If he thinks that race strategy is a problem for him now, though, he isn't going to enjoy his next season at Ferrari. Of course, it would soon come to pass that 16 years on from that disqualification that took away his first Belgian Grand Prix win, he was gifted one back. 
George Russell's car was found to be 1.5 kilograms under the minimum weight limit during the post-race scrutineering and was disqualified from the race. The coincidence of it being Stewart's document 44 that gave car 44 the win wasn't missed by fans either. To be disqualified for the car being underweight is a shocking mistake by Mercedes, and the Stewart's document revealed that it was exactly that. The FIA document stated, the team acknowledged that there were no mitigating circumstances and that it was a genuine error by the team. While Russell's inspired strategy call may have got him to the checkered flag first, it's likely also the reason he was disqualified. That decision to run his hard tires for 34 laps was the very thing that ultimately cost him the win because there were weight consequences from doing so. As the tires wear down the longer they run, the less rubber is on them and the lighter they get. Due to how long the lap is at Spa, there's no cooldown lap, the drivers just go backwards down the pit lane. Normally, drivers would drive offline on their cooldown lap to pick up the rubber marbles that are cast off as the tires wear down to add weight back onto the car, but Russell was unable to do that. The missing weight of 1.5 kilograms may sound like a lot, but we're only talking about 375 grams from each tire, and considering the tires weigh 9 to 11 kilograms each, that's only 4.2 to 3.4 percent of the tire weight that's lost. It is normal for F1 teams to take expected tire wear profiles and the likely reduction in weight into account when they settle on their race weight when adding ballast to the car. Due to the weather over the Belgian Grand Prix weekend being so changeable, there had been no hard tyre running in race day conditions prior to the race, and with no one even considering a one-stop strategy before Russell did on lap 26, Mercedes just hadn't accounted for it in their calculations. According to Mario Izzola, Pirelli's head of motorsport and the man in charge of all F1 tyres, the lack of marbles from a cooldown lap could easily account for the difference in weight that meant Russell got disqualified. Considering that he is 1.5 kilos underweight, 1.5 kilos on four tires is possible if you're talking about the pickup, he said. If you have a lot of pickup, then for 1.5 kilos, it would be less than 400 grams on each tire. It's a number that is possible. However, that lack of cooldown lap can't be blamed. Mercedes knew there wouldn't be a cooldown lap and should have accounted for it when telling Russell that the one stop was possible. It was a miscalculation by the team, which should never have happened. So while Hamilton was furious at Mercedes for not giving him the option of a one-stop or telling him that his teammate was doing one, he might be glad now that they didn't. The Mercedes team principal Toto Wolff admitted his team had no excuse for the error that cost George Russell the win at the Belgian Grand Prix, which the Austrian described as a massive blow for his driver. Wolff said, We have to take it on the chin. We've clearly made a mistake and need to ensure we learn from it. For George, that is a massive blow. As a driver, all those childhood dreams of winning these races, and then it's been taken away. Russell made his feelings clear in a post on social media, describing the disqualification as heartbreaking. At the end of the day, Hamilton got what he felt like he deserved, but for the Mercedes team as a whole, it'll be a desperately disappointing result. They should have gained 25 points on Ferrari in the battle for third place in the Constructors' Championship, but instead, they only gained two. Nonetheless, going into the summer break, Mercedes appear to be in the ascendancy in one of the most competitive championships in recent memories. Do you think Mercedes messed up by not helping Hamilton win the race? And what do you think of Russell's disqualification? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and until next time, drive safe and bye for now.